there we go. I think we're all good. Yep, we got a game gear in shot, so that's good news. Camera seems to be working. And I assume you can hear me. Um, yeah, I think we're basically good to get started. So, what we got here is a... Uh, so Game Gear I've already recapped, you know, I've already get, gone ahead and spruced it up and made it all nice, nice install, everything's clean. Or, you know, clean enough. Um, and we've got the LCD unit, the uh, driver board, and the actual display as well. And uh, we're going to be installing it. And it's a fairly straightforward install, it's just, you know, use some of this kind of wire and uh, solder to a few points around the main board and that should give us LCD. So I've done this before, I've done it three or four times now I think. And um, yeah, so hopefully we have a nice easy install on this one. Um, so I guess we'll get, cr we'll get cracking. So first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to um, solder in some uh, wires on this. Now what we have on on this thing, you can probably see down here, we've got like these quick solder points. I've not used these before, but they work. So I'm thinking of using these on this install, and seeing just how neat we can make it. So I'm going to cut off a bunch of bits of this uh, of this wire that we need. So um, yeah, we'll get a few good size lengths of this because um, again, this board's going to sit sort of here and then these wires you know they need to be routed around the board to wherever they need to go so I'm gonna need one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen about fourteen wires for this install actually no more than that anyway we need a lot of wire so, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and get snippity snipping on it. So, cut them nice, and give them nice generous lengths. Uh, so, yeah. You know, there's not much to this, it's just trimming wires. Trimming, trimming, trimming. So I'll trim up a bunch. It's quite a nice wire, this as well. It's um, single thread core, which makes it just a little bit easier to install. So, yeah. And um, what I'll do is I'll set the game gear aside for a second. Just pop that out of the way. And um, we'll get this board. And uh, yeah, we'll get these. We'll get these installed. In fact, I should probably spin up the old uh, soldering iron and use the teeth wire strippers. <laughs> I really should get some uh, better wire strippers than the ones I actually have. I've got a crap pair of wire strippers, I just don't really use them because they're crap. So, you know, tried and tested tool, teeth. There you are. <laughs> I hate doing this. <laughs> right, there we go. So, yeah. Um, now, let's have a look at the pinout. So, we've got... One, two, three... We don't need. Do we need C sync? No, we don't need C sync. Okay, cool. So, I'm trying to think the best way to route these actually, because if we've got the board installed like that, we'll have a bit of room at the bottom of it there. So yeah, I guess we could route wires up through the back. Yeah, okay. I want to make this a nice tidy install, so let's get on with it. So 
So what do we want to solder in first, and what side do we want everything? I think we can get away with all of the LCD ones being on this side, so... That should make things a bit easier. Yeah, okay. Alright, so what are we going to solder? We're going to solder D0. So, you know, you just poke the wire through. And, uh, yeah, keep it aligned like that. We'll get this under the scope. And we'll get that one soldered in first. That's my zit. So good for this kind Well, they're not bad for this kind of work, but, yeah. There we go, let's get that in shot. There we go. So let's get that focused. That's focused for me and the camera. LCD mod. So um, we're installing them at Will Clone. You can get them on AliExpress. They're uh, reasonably affordable. Uh, well, versus system at Will anyway. I know there's a lot more uh, screens becoming available right now because we've got the Ben Venn screens coming soon. What else we got? We've got the Ben Venn. Um, I think Retro 6 are planning to release one soon as well. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of new LCDs coming, so these AliExpress ones won't be the only affordable ones anymore, which is nice. Alright, that's one wire in. Trim this while we're at it. Nagatron. <laughs> right, cool. Uh, what's the next one? What is the next one? Um, one below that will be D1. Okay, so these are all LCD ones. Just bear with me, I'm just uh, fiddling around with wires. Let's get that into shot a bit better for you guys. There we go. Oh, hey, Savas. Welcome. Welcome. So what we're doing here is we're wiring up a uh, modern LCD display to a uh, old-school Sega Game Gear. So I'm just using these easy solder pads that come on the board just to spice things up a bit compared to how I've done these before. Hopefully it makes it nice and neat. So yeah, we got this under the scope. And let's just get rid of that debris. There we go. Hey Uber, welcome. Welcome on, welcome one, welcome all. Cool. So yeah, I guess I'll just keep keep doing these. I mean, I know this is a little boring, it's just wires, but hey ho. The end result is always cool with these, though. Well, I say always cool. Depends on if I screw something up or not, which I probably won't, but you never know. Now that I've said that, I've doomed myself. <laughs> okay, next one. go and let's get that into view and there we are so using the power of a uh, red hot soldering iron and my strong arms and razor sharp hands we'll get this installed so these are cool as well these mod boards whoever developed them uh, well McWill developed the originals he um 
used a... What, what chip is that? A Xilinx 3? Yeah, it's a Xilinx 3 FPGA. It's pretty cool that they're using uh, field programmable gate arrays on these to power them. It's neat. Neato burrito. From WPB Florida. Well, welcome. Welcome from the UK. Um, don't know where WPB is. Maybe I'm just being a bit dense. <laughs> but welcome all the same. I'm not that brilliant on my American geography. I know a, I know a bit of California and a little bit of the East Coast, but yeah, I am uh, uncultured. Right, thanks. I'm going to turn this Game Gear uh, mod board into Cthulhu before it gets installed. Let's try and get. You know, it's always awkward doing this. Right, let's get let's get that wire in. I think what I need to do is I need to set up a picture in picture, really, and get a side camera view. I should probably do that at some point. You know, just so you guys get a better view of like what I'm actually up to when you can't see on the scope. So there we go. That is the next one to solder in, right there. West Palm Beach. Oh yeah, I guess that would make sense, yeah. Yeah, it's just my ignorance on show, that. <laughs> well, greetings from the uh, sunny East Midlands of the United Kingdom. The uh, the crown jewel of the UK right here. The crown jewel. Right, we'll get those trimmed while we're at it. No, you're not obtuse at all. It's just I'm basically ignorant. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. I don't know why. My brain was thinking all points bulletin, but I know that ain't right. <laughs> right, cool, okay, so we got four wires in. So that's um what we got? We got D zero, D one, D two, oh and D three. We've got those soldered in. So we don't we do need DW. Um Do we need C L three? I think we do. Okay. Sorry, I'm just just working out which other cables I need. I'm looking. I'm actually looking at a diagram on my um, on my monitor as well at the minute. All right. So what we got? We got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and we need DW and. CL2. Yeah, we need CL2 because that's one of the data lines where the LCD display goes. Okay, cool. So we need to do these two as well. So let's get those in. Uh, just get that into shot. There we go. Ah, crap. Cut the wire with my teeth. Not quite what I intended. There we go. There we go. So. Oh, let me neck. Cool. And then we'll pull that back so that the insulation isn't sticking through the hole. I'll try and pull this up with some tweezers just a little bit. Right, that should keep it there for while we sold it. Let's, let's crack on. Let's crack on. Cool. 
You know, actually, I quite like using, I quite like these uh, quick solder joint pad things. Because there is another way you can uh, solder these up, which is a way I've normally used. I probably didn't really explain it, but uh, if you take a look, there's these uh, pads right here. You can also solder it by these pads. I'm not doing that. I'm just doing it by these um, quick through hole thingies. Probably better if you've got an old IDE cable or something, but yeah, this is this is fine. Yeah, anyway, how's everyone doing? I hope you're all, uh, hope you're all safe and sound and you know, having a good one. Cool, we're in shot. Excellent. Yeah, I know solar and iron. You don't need to beep at me. I know. Oh man, that's that sucks, Uber. That sucks. I mean, water damage is never fun to deal with, anyways. But you know, going through all that work to then find that. Oh, that sucks. That's all right. You can just chill and watch a uh, retro modification. Why not, right? Uh, what else have we got to wire in? So we got those six. We're skipping C sync, so I need. Sorry, I'm working out which ones I need now. Um. Okay, need more wire. More wire. Three, one, two, three. Skip that one. So we'll do that bottom one. <laughs> oh, thanks, RB. I appreciate that. That's awesome of you. You don't have to do that. Yeah, I mean, the pair I've got, I picked up on eBay, and they looked alright, but they were just crap, you know. <laughs> you sort of live and learn, right? I mean, for once I am blaming the tools. <laughs> okay, I don't really want to go melting these wires with a soldering iron, so let's just get them out of the way. Move that up. And there we go. Another snipped. Hey Technic Nerd, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Good to have you. You know, I'm starting to recognize you guys you guys' names as well now. It's um it's quite cool. I really appreciate you guys, uh, you guys watching on the regular. It's awesome. So we've got four. We're skipping C sync. Are we skipping C sync, or do I need C sync? No, I don't think I do. I think it's C sync's for RGB, if I remember rightly. Oh, Amtec, yeah, Amtec. Um it's interesting actually with Amtec because most Amtec tools that you'll see online are not made by Amtec. They're usually Chinese clones and they're kind of trading off the Amtec name. There's nothing wrong with that because it's usually good stuff, but you know. I've got a bunch of fake Amtec flux. <laughs> so that's a five there. If 
fact, uh, while I'm faffing around, while I'm faffing around, I'll show you guys what I keep referring to. So. If I, uh, if I shared a desktop, this is what I'm referring to right here. This is what I'm looking at. Because you can see the quick soldering pads are actually labelled on this, on here. And they're not labelled under my scope. Because if I, if I flip back over to the microscope, they haven't bloody labelled them on the actual board. They've only labelled them in this picture. Irritating, but, you know, it is what it is, right? Anyway, so what we got? We've got... Do, 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 do. Um, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So I'll skip one and then I'll go to the GGSMS cable. Okay. Okay, I see. I see. So the next hole I'm doing is that one. So let's do that one. Ah, wire everywhere. Wire everywhere. I tell you, this thing really is starting to look like Cthulhu. <laughs> Jubbly, lovely jubbly. Okay. Um. There we go. Also, Savas, if you're still watching, are you the Savas? I think you are. Are you a Savas? I know. Because if you are. I will be seeing you tomorrow. GGSMS. Uh, yeah, that's. I think that's right. That looks right. And then we skip. Okay, yeah, that's right. Cool. Oh, hey, Alex13 mod. Welcome. Oh, no. Nice Uber, nice. Um, they're nice little boards. They're they're reasonably easy to work with. You've probably got the uh, slightly updated one to this because this is the last um, two point one board I've got, which is not as good as the uh, updated ones. The updated ones have a few nice new features. For example, on the updated board, you can install a um, a separate oscillator, a uh, thirty two um, megahertz. Is it megahertz? I think it's a 32 megahertz um, oscillator crystal that sits on the board. This one doesn't support that. There's no points. There's no pads for it. But basically, it's because some Game Gears have problems when using their um, when trying to use the uh, clock signal from the main board. So yeah, you, you can't just simply. Um, well, you can simply tap. I'll be tapping the uh, mainboard oscillator crystal for this one, but uh, but yeah, it's not always as straightforward. Sometimes when you get weird artifacting on the display and so on, you know, like you have to have an external oscillator, and they added in support for that, which I think was a, a modification made by McWill initially, and obviously it just got cloned. Ah, oh, welcome, Jason. Good to have you. Good to have you. So, what do we have? We have um, two more pads. Two more wires on this particular point of the board. So, let's get some more wire. Yeah, yeah. That's, that sounds right, Uber. That sounds right. 
if you ever go on Reddit, you'll see people sort of asking questions like, why doesn't my display work and stuff like that, particularly um, modded ones. It's usually because of the oscillator. I'm just stripping wires with my patented wire strip solution trademark. All right, it's reserved. Patent pending. Okay, so skip one. Next one's ground. I think on the top row is it ground? Is that right? That looks right. Okay. go and bring this into shots there we are almost there we are that's better and then we'll get this one in as well One thing to be wary of, by the way, for anybody who wants to do one of these installs, these boards, they're decent quality, but they're kind of cheap at the same time, and if you leave your heat lingering on the pads on these, um, on these LCD mod boards, you will lift them real easy. It doesn't take much. Again, they're kind of cheap, so just bear that in mind if you're doing an install of one of these particularly on the mounting points. I'll actually show those in a second. Um, but this way you solder the um, the mod board onto the Game Gear itself. It's a bit um, a bit dicey, shall we say. There we go. And then that's the last one for these quick solder points on the Cthulhu part of the board. Back over. There we are. Oh no, how'd you do that, Jason? Well, what happened? Yeah, I mean, man, it always sucks breaking something like a phone. I actually, <laughs> I actually broke my, my one not long ago, funnily enough. Fixed it, but it was kind of annoying. Although, to be fair, mine's less expensive than an iPhone because it's just a droid. What did you do? Give that a snip. Hello, RWL2012. Welcome to the stream. Uh, what we have here is a. Uh, Sega Game Gear that we're modding, so actually speaking of which, we got more quick solder points. You've watched all the other Game Gear ones and have only missed half an hour of this. Well, all you've really missed, I'm just soldering, I've just been soldering wires. That's all I've been doing at the minute, just soldering wires to the uh, mod board as we can see here. So you've not missed too much. You know, this is kind of prep work, right? Oh man, this is Spaghetti Junction now. Wow. But yeah, J Jason, I really, I really hope you're able to uh, repair your phone. On the plus side, might make an interesting uh, video, right? Okay. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to. Um, Camera. You can see here we got spaghetti, uh, spaghetti madness going on at the bottom of there. I told you this thing turned into Cthulhu. Oh god, really? T what? Man, that's weird.
Just trying to turn it on with tweezers and that happened. What a git. Damn. Okay, so we're expecting this pen to be ground, I think. Great, that is ground, okay. I think I've wired all these up right. We're expecting the one below it to be VCC. It is. We're expecting D1, D3, CL. Bit of a lag time. Which one's the second one? It's a pin two, should be D three. Yeah, looks like D three. Ah, uh, yeah, cool. Oh, 5S. Well, yeah, at least it's not one of the modern ones that costs you like $8,000 just for the handset and then goes out of date a year later. And, you know, if you need a part for it, you've got to spend another $8,000 with Apple. If you're lucky. I mean, 5S parts, at least a dime a dozen if it's anything like. If anything's gone, you know. It still sucks, though. Um, what's this thing? That pin is CL2. Cool. Fourth one should be clock. You gonna buzz at me or not? Come on. You. Multimeter's acting up a bit. I might need better probes. Or just to clean these ones. Actually, I probably just need to clean these ones. Eh, it's fine. I'll get to it. Okay, so that's clock. So let's check D0, D2, DW. So D0. Great. D2. Great. Cool. I'm just confirming because this, this is a slightly different revision board. I did test it earlier, but I'm just being paranoid. C Sync, we've not wired up. GGSMS should be that one. And it is. Do we have an alternate point for these? No beep, no beep, no beep. No beepy. Well, that's annoying, isn't it? Unless it's one of these. No. Nope. Aha! Uh -huh. Now that was not labelled on this diagram. Well, I wouldn't say it's the best.
Right, there we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, my, uh, that's strange. I had this on charge the other day and it's already died. I'm going to have to put it back on charge. Um, oh, but otherwise, I can just stop the recording. Let me have a look real quick. I assume you can still hear me. It's still on. I wish I could tell the battery level was on. Yeah, audio is out. I've just switched to the backup microphone, but I'll, I'll be just a second. I'm just seeing if I can bring this back. Yeah, it's very quiet because I'm using a fixed microphone, uh, not the not the uh, Laypool one. I'm just switching back now. Uh, da, 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 da. Where are you, Mi Mr. Microphone? There you are. Oh. Right, how's that? That should be better. Yeah, it's this damn thing. I guess it just um, crapped out on me. Yeah, things things happen. But yeah, I assume, yeah, okay, I can see the audio moving there. Oh, I'll just have to make a solder joint as well. Right. Let's get back to it anyways. There we go. Ah, why is this tangled? There we go. Yeah, don't think it was a battery. I think it was just being derp. If it does die again, let me know though. That doesn't look too bad. Nice to see you, to see you nice. Ah, poor old Brucey. Ah, nuts. There we go. Right. Apologies. Let me just double check where I was with the meter because I've kind of lost which one was what. Just solder in. What did I just solder? What? Yeah, I got derailed. <laughs> Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in. Let Okay, apparently my camera doesn't want to zoom in. Why is that? Oh, there we go. So we zoom, zoom, zoom. I just soldered in whatever that is. And now I'm questioning my sanity. What's that even connected to? What did I do? <laughs> nah, well, easily fixed. Oh, it's that one that I'm not snipped yet, okay. What is that? C-Sync. New. What the box did I just solder in? What is that line? That is...
four along from the right on the top row, so it's that one. Oh, that is seasick. Why is that not buzzing then? What's wrong with you, multimeter? Why aren't you buzzing? Oh, wrong pad. Okay, yeah, I'll get that wire. Let me, uh, let me take that off. You need the C-Sync for um, VGA. And we're not doing a VGA install. Um, maybe that one. Yes, you are. Okay. Yeah, kid. It's probably because it is. Yeah, it was. It'd fallen off. Oh, this bloody technology. They said it'd make it e they said it'd make life easy, right? They lied to us. They lied to us. That's much better. Okay. <laughs> right. One, two, three, four. Okay. Let's fix that wire. So that was that a one. Boom. Uninstalled. <sighs> Bloody hell. Bloody hell. So what I was doing, I think I was wiring in P1 and P2. That's what I was meant to wire in. So let's double check that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Great, awesome. Thanks for pointing it out, Kit. Uh, wrong way. Let's need to get an on-screen multimeter as well at some point. I'm actually thinking of hacking this one for fun. Alright, so you're P1. Your pizza. Okay. Okay. So we want that other one. I like that. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Humming away because I'm slightly nuts. Right, sweet, that's that. We've got one wire to go, which fortunately I have right here. It needs to be a long one, I think. Longish. Because P1 and P2 are for the brightness control. So they sort of hook directly onto the uh, existing potentiometer on the Game Gear motherboard. Right onto pins 2 and 3, I think, off the top of my head. Really? I think, um, Jason, I think I was watching one of your videos when I was slacking off from uh, my day job. And um, 
Well, I say slacking off, I wasn't really slacking. I'm kind of blocked on the ticket I'm on and I was between meetings. But anyway, that's irrelevant. But um, yeah, I did see that you did have um, you did have display on whatever video I was watching. I think it was fairly recent. Um, we still have audio? Yeah, great. Okay, so let's get that under the scope view. You know what, Jason? Seriously, I know this might sound a bit nerdy, but like, you might want to consider using Linux. Because when you get it set up, you never really have to worry about it bricking itself. It is a pain getting things set up on Linux, but once you do, it's great. Right, that's... I think that's everything we need. I think. That yeah, looks pretty good to me. Uh, cotton bud. Let's do a bit of clean up. Sweet. Cool. Yeah, yeah. See, I was thinking of doing something entirely more hacky. I was thinking of, like, maybe, like, wiring in some kind of uh, module or some such. Okay. Um, where did I put the delicious Sega Game Gear? There it is. One delicious Game Gear. Yeah, fair enough, Jason. I can understand that. I mean, a lot of people just want stuff to work, right? I mean, who, who wants the extra hassle? Fair enough. Claims it works fine and doesn't. Well, um, what's the problem? That's the question, isn't it? What's the problem you see it? This is certainly some sort of spaghetti mess. I'm actually thinking of doing uh, something like this, like, and then just metering out the cables as needed, right? I could do that. That'd be that'd make for a ni neat install, wouldn't it? What do you guys think? Should I subject myself to the uh, horrors of having to meter out each individual cable? I think I do like the way that's going to look twisted, though, right? Has anyone in here bought a Sega Power Adapter that the seller claim works fine but doesn't? I'm wondering whether that's because of the intermittent power issue on the Mega Drive 1 PAL VA4. Or is it that two of the solder blobs on the DC jack board look like they're sort of melted together? Well, you know, there's no way f for any of us to know, really, without seeing it, right? Um, so, you know, I, I don't think anyone here can give you an answer on that one, unfortunately. It's kind of detective work on your part, right? Like, yeah. Could be. Totally could be. You know, if you've got bridge solder joints. Absolutely could be. It's not that uncommon a thing. Although it does mean somebody's been in there playing with it, so... You know, who knows, right? So what we need to do... You can probably see what I'm doing here. What we need to do is align this up nicely with the top and the holes like this. We actually have to secure it down with some solder. Now I know some of these go on the top. Now those t those will go on the top. Ground and VCC I'm going to tap off of the cartridge port. Um, clock goes on this side of the board, so I'll have to reroute that cable. So, 
Let's leave the clock one. Hmm. Okay. So I'm just working out the best wire management for this at the minute. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be too precious. I'm not gonna be too precious. I can always desolder a wire if it's not quite where I want it. So. Aligned. Okay, that alignment looks to be pretty good. I think. Yep. Yeah, that's a good idea. Try, um, RWL, try, uh, console repair, R console repair on Reddit. Uh, the community there is pretty good. I'm sure they'll, uh, give you some pointers and so on. Oh, nuts. I always hate this part of the installation. Sort of getting everything level. I like I like things to be as neat as possible. Now I mentioned earlier it's really easy to lift pads on these. It's these pads that are the ones that are easy to do. Uh, recapping the second game gear. That went fine. I did wait, did I recap that one? Um Did that go fine? Oh yeah. So I recap one it didn't go fine. I did a whole load of faffing around trying to get it working. In the end, declared it dead. Possibly still could get it working, but who knows? It's just not worth the hassle. Oh, for bloody... Come on, bridge, you bugger. Bridge. Bridge. That sounds dangerous, Road Warrior, to me. Or that maybe you don't have the best temperature checking tool, maybe. I mean, you got to remember, it might not be the iron that's wrong. It might be your thermometer. Has that done it? I think that might have just about done it. Yeah, I think that's secured it. Okay, great, that's that one. Let's get a bit of zoom. And then we'll uh, do this on the corner. Come on, you can do it. I'm trying to convince this Sega Game Gear that I don't need an electrical connection, just a mechanical one here. Come on. Right, let's just blob loads of solder on. Oh, you know what? I don't need to. That went. Oh, 
Oh, hey, Micro. Wait, did I say hello, Micro Mage? I'm not sure. Did I say hello? I think I said hello. I don't know. If I didn't, hello. <laughs> right, let's, um, let's do this corner. Let's do this little corner. That reminds me, I really need to, um, I really need to watch Bruce. I haven't watched Bruce in a while. It's just those time zones are killer for me. In fact, Micro, um, I know you watch Bruce, Bruce Rain's, um, streams a lot, like, how's he doing? Oh, come on. Come on, join. Join. Well, put it on the inside, maybe. Um, really kind of constrained to the game gear as well. I mean, what you'd think they'd do is give a bracket, right? Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean, actually. Yeah, like an underside bracket mount thing. Yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? But they don't. They just don't, lad. They just don't. Oh yeah, happy St. Patrick's Day. Man, I'm flooding this solder everywhere except where I need it. <laughs> Let's see if we can... Uh convince it it needs to go up here. No, instead I'm just flowing out. Well, it's a good amount of solar at least. Oh, bloody come on. It's one of the few times I'm starting to think maybe having fluxless solar would be handy. Oh, okay, Micro. Cool, cool. Yeah, I only ever catch Bruce, like, if he's streaming, like, basically on a Friday, uh, very occasionally when I'm not sleeping right, on a, um, Saturday as well. It's a beautiful blob, isn't it? You know, I will give it. Yeah, let's see if tilting helps. Has that done it? That's just about. Uh, that's just about connected it. That's fine. I mean, it's not, again, it doesn't need. It doesn't need to be rock solid. It's not. It's not going to be moving anywhere after it's installed. So. All right, let's let's do this corner. This one could be annoying as well. Ah, why why you do this to me? Try to read the voltage on a zero one double zero five filter and press too hard, it disintegrates. Mm, I'll keep that in mind. What exactly are you trying to do, Jason? And this is the part where it's read one of those zero one zero zero five filters. Are those the ones on the switch?
Come on, why must you give me that? Ah. Uh, uh, dear, dear, dear. You know, let's see if I've got any. Um, yeah, let's try this solder. Is this a thicker one? 0.5 millimeter. Yeah, I can probably get more of this on at once, actually. Let's try this one. So fiddly. It's also kind of in shadow. This is <laughs> this is thoroughly annoying. Come on. Ha! Well, you know, I can't help it, you know, I've only got 8,000 reels more of this under the desk, you know, j just in case. Alright, how, how are we looking there? How are we looking? How are we looking? Eh, not too bad. Not too bad. Is that firmly, firmly in? Yep, yeah, it's firmly in. Although this side is not as firmly uh, pushed down as I would like. flush. Cool. By the way, any, anybody wondering, um, these aren't actually made by Funny Playing. That's a lie. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a complete lie. They really aren't made by Funny Playing. Um, yeah. That, that newsflash, you know, that's it. End of PSA. Right, okay, so what we got to do now then is we've got to wire up uh, the LCD stuff, the LCD gubbins. We've got a wire about four or six wires to that. I think it's about six wires actually. Let me uh, let me double check that though. So I'm just going to leave. I'm going to leave the camera where it is for a second, and I'm just going to um, I'm just going to check that. So if I, I pop this here, I've got a bit of an unusual setup. Um, I know you guys can't see it, but like I've got streaming on one window, and uh, I've got um, OBS in another. I can see your chat at least, but yeah, I've now got this diagram up so I can actually see what I'm doing. So first one, CL2. You're gonna want this under the scope as well. Okay. So, I've got to remember which one of these was CL2. There's the multimeter. person. Not straight at the bottom? No, it's not perfectly straight. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be. It's just a PCB board, right? It's like, it's off by um, a couple of millimetres. It's like a millimetre that way, a millimetre that way. Board itself doesn't matter. The alignment of the board is not as important as people might think. 
it's the alignment of the LCD that's the important part, but like that, I install slightly differently to most people, so it's less of a concern for me than it would be for, for other people, basically. So... No, no, it, it is off. It's off ever so slightly. It's not a great deal, but it is off. You see, the important thing with this mod, which a lot of people don't realise, and it actually leads to a lot of people getting the install wrong as well, is uh, these LCDs... They have a ribbon connector, and the ribbon connector simply plugs into that, and the display goes over the top like that with some slack. You know, there's some up and down, there's some up and down free movement when you've got this plugged in. You can sort of move it like that. And what I do, I use a double sided adhesive along these. And I secure it to the frame of the actual Game Gear itself. And if you shove it up against uh, two of the posts, you can get the alignment perfect every time with little effort, which is nice. So yeah, Uber's absolutely right. It's just the LCD that needs to be straight. It's not that bored. Which is the good news. It makes life easier. Um, Right, anyway, so, what I was doing, I was going to wire, okay, so I need to wire DZ, right, sorry, I've got like a million windows open, I'm just trying to find the right one, there we go, okay, so I wanted CL2, CL2 is one, two, three, three from the left, on the bottom, bottom, so I need this wire. Right here. So what we can do like this roughly. And um, that needs to go to pin nine on the ribbon. This I'm gonna be doing under the scope. So we'll flip over to the scope. We get spaghetti monster madness out of the way. Here's one I prepared earlier. So we need pin number nine, I think I said. Yeah. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that one. So we're going to be soldering to that. Roughly, so let me just snip this wire. Strip the wire a bit. And you know what? While I'm actually at it, let's just tin these. We might as well just tin these. So we'll get a bit of flux. Yeah, gonna be interesting that Road Warrior. Will be very interesting. It'll also be interesting to see how it helps the um, right to repair movement over in the US. Because I know um, Lewis Rossman's been doing a lot of stuff on that recently. He's been putting a lot of effort into um, sort of raising awareness for right to, re right to repair. And um, rightfully so. I mean, if you go out and buy something in the store, is it yours or does it belong to the company you bought it from? Obviously, it's yours. I mean, it's a no-brainer. 
but companies want people to lease. They don't want people to buy and own. They want people to lease. And it's a creeping business model. And they're doing it against, you know, without the consent of the users, without the consent of the customers. It's all a load of crap. Solder and iron up a bit. Whoa, my soldering station's crashed. <laughs> I've never seen that happen before. Bear with me, I'll breathe. The software on my soldering iron crashed. Can you believe that? Well, Road Warrior thing is, it's not just um, it's not just Apple, is it? It's, there's, there's so many dodgy companies doing that shit now. It's it's ridiculous, right? Absolutely, like right to repair is a must. I mean, take the John Deere stuff. You know, the tractors and the other farming equipment, right? Like, you're a farmer, you're out in the sticks, you know, like, I don't know, maybe you're out in Idaho or something, you know, and you're in the middle of some fields, you've got a huge crop to haul in. Your tractor breaks or whatever, you know, whatever it is you're using. And then you've got to wait, like, a week to get some authorised dealer bullshit, like, you know, well, I won't swear, but you know what I mean, to get some authorised dealer to deal with it. And then you can't, well... With a car you can, you know, you can go down to any independent garage, garage, you know, and you can get your stuff sorted out, right? And that's how it should be, because you own it. Looks properly tin now. Absolutely. I mean, you know what? A country can't survive without without agriculture and without its farmers. You know, one of the most important things any country has is its food security, and it is a case of security, right? You imagine if, like, some dodgy foreign influencer got in and was able to, like, prevent authorised dealerships for farming equipment from being able to repair the stuff because, I don't know, they've disabled the software or something like that. Suddenly you can bring a nation to its knees by hacking, like, one firm, one company that deals with repair of tractors. Boom. Game over. You know. You think about that, right? Like, that's actually a scary thought. Well, Road Warrior, that is possible, but it's unlikely. And the reason it's unlikely is because there's probably import controls on it. It's tightly regulated, you know, in America, right? Because people can already get parts for Apple products. It's just you've got to jump through hoops. And it's, it's that jumping through hoops that's the insanity of it all, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's a small one. Okay. You know, it's just nuts. It's absolutely nuts, and it's ridiculous. It's just stupid. You know, people like Rossman, they're fighting the good fight, and it's a fight they shouldn't even have to fight. You know, it's, it's just nuts. It really is. It's just absolutely bonkers. Five, 
six, seven, eight, nine. Right there. Yeah, it'll always be loopholes, but you shouldn't you shouldn't have to be jumping through loopholes. And that's sort of what it boils down to, right? It boils down to should you be jumping through hoops to repair your own stuff? And the answer obviously to anybody with any kind of brain is no. You know, you want to get something repaired, it should be as simple as getting it repaired. Let's just make sure this is properly soldered. Yep, great stuff. Okay. But yeah, you know, like <laughs> Yeah, the whole thing's ridiculous. Again, I actually think the farming, um, the farm equipment one is the bigger deal in the US. I mean, it's it's nice for, you know, like, electronics repair techs to be able to repair, like, MacBooks or, or uh, I don't know, Samsung smartphones or whatever. Uh, what's the next one? D1. Okay. Which one's D1 on here? First one... On the left, so that one should be D1. I think. Oh, I've got to zoom in on this. I'm leaning over and looking at stuff, and uh, crazy. Crazy, crazy. There we go. That's better. Okay. So D1 goes to... D1 is the next pin at pin 16. Okay. So where's pin 16? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. These V's go all the way through. make this easier on myself and just solder straight through the veer. Maybe I could, you know. Maybe I could. That would make my life slightly easier. Yeah, Kit, you're completely right. I mean, they've tried that, haven't they? They've already done that. They're like, look, we're throwing you a bone. It's like, nah. They're really not. Oh, this is BS. Sorry guys, I'm stripping wires with teeth. It's awkward. So, I got a theory. I got an idea. So, the idea is to see if this wire will fit through the via. And if it does, I could just scrape away a tiny bit of solder mask on the other side and make this job just that little bit easier. So, we want to go from. One, nine, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, so it's that one. My thinking being that I could just do through hole soldering. Yeah, board view, <laughs> board view for the Switch would be handy for so many people. Like, I don't really understand properly how to read those kind of schematics. Uh, it, you know, people like Jason do. But people like me, I'm... No. I want to, mind you. I need to take a little course on that. I was actually thinking about taking a Khan Academy course or something similar to Khan Academy just to, um, you know, get up to speed with how to read diagrams. I mean, I can just about get by, but yeah, I mean, it'd be cool to be able to get board views of just about anything, right? Like, that would be really good for the uh, electronics repair community in general, right? And hopefully that'll happen, because it'll make so many people's lives easier. Repair techs will rejoice. I guess what a really crazy stuff's going to happen, though, is there's going to be... Um, there's going to be a lot of crazy stuff coming up around... Um, particular patents, rights, and so on, and, you know, that, like, right now, there's probably going to be, like, NDAs and stuff like that and stuff. We might not see any kind of schematics. In fact, I very much doubt we will see, like, official schematics of something like the uh, Nintendo Switch. I just can't see it happening. I can't see it happening for things like the uh, PS4 or whatever, either. What they'll probably have to do is make available the components on the board, but I don't think they're going to necessarily have to, um, you know, provide schematics for it. We'll see, right? Like, I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know. I haven't looked into the legislation really either, so I don't know the, um, I don't know the devil of the details. And you know, obviously, that's always the key. Yeah, it would create jobs overnight. Hey, Jinxie. Welcome. Welcome. So, let's see if my genius really does know no bounds. Or if I'm just being a fool. Could be even. about that for a crazy install, eh? Well, 
let's just double check that I do have continuity for that. It should do. You know, I think I'm going to use this method for all of these wires now then. Right, okay. So we got one of them wired up. Uh, I've wired up some cables. So I've done CL2. Pin sixteen, which is bottom left. Yep. So the next one is pin eighteen with D zero. Zero is this top left one. Okay. 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 Let's do something nice with these cables, shall we? So let's go and just pop that down a bit. Let's try the old fashioned wire stripping method. <laughs> when in doubt, burn it. Glorious. What's going on in chat? Um, this one is... Which version is this? 2.0B, apparently. 2.0B. And I'm changing it up a bit. I'm being a little bit different to how I'd normally do it. Just because I thought, why not? Why not change it up a bit? That should be... I think that's enough to go through the board. Well, let's take it back a bit more anyways. But yeah, V 2.1, where's, there we go, okay, so, this one is D0, and I'm connecting D0 to, D0 to 18, 16, 17, 18, so that's the whole I want. Oh, 
on nuts. Go back. Get back. That's it. Stay. <laughs> okay, I see where it's meant to be. I think you guys can see where it's poking through a bit there as well. Yeah. Yeah, this is the AliExpress kit. I'm installing it a little bit different. I'm install using uh, vias instead of the edge connector. I mean, they're not meant for soldering too like this, but you know what? Why not, right? There's nothing stopping me. Nothing stopping me except a tiny bit, teeny tiny bit of green solder mask. And honestly, what's a little bit of green solder mask against a uh, Swan Morton scalpel? Don't stand a chance, does it? Not at all. Yeah, they do have the 3.1 now. 3.1 looks like it's got some interesting upgrades, but to be honest, I think um, the ones to keep the eye out on are the Ben Venn screens. Ben Venn have been doing screens for so many different systems recently, but like uh, the newest one for the Game Gear apparently can extend its battery life up to about 10 hours or something, which is pretty crazy for uh, a Game Gear. I mean, these kits do okay. You get about four, maybe five hours out of the battery on these, but like, yeah, the Ben Vens are genuinely quite impressive. Uh, I'm just trying to push this lead through just a teeny bit more. Yeah, I should do it. But yeah, they definitely do have the uh, 3.1 now. 3.1 looks okay. Alright, Solder and Iron, I don't want you running at 400 degrees Celsius. I really don't need you that hot. Alrighty. shiny to me. I don't like that. Let's make it shiny. Now then. The important thing is that we have continuity. So I'm going to check from the pad on the edge and the LCD board. Yeah, well, I think, um, I don't think he has massive production runs, you know, and, um, yeah, it's just one of those things, isn't it? Like, the, the, the man's obviously very talented at what he does, um, yeah, just forever, forever stock problems. Oh, 
I'm not familiar with that one, RWL. Yeah, not too bad, Dan will fix it. Not too bad. Welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, we're just we're just installing a LCD board at the minute. Um, let's take a look at this. So the next one, I've done CL2, D1, D0. So the next one is DW. And DW is third pin on the top from the right. Okay. So I need... Actually, I need this wire I'm holding. Yep. Okay. that didn't work. Right, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, got it. And that would be 20. Okay. My rebellious install technique, trademark. No brightness control, really? Huh. Yeah, you'd think brightness control would just be one of those things that you'd have, right? Like, yeah, I guess it is what it is. Just turning these, <laughs> just turning these into regular solar pads. Let's reveal that bright copper. No, dejected. I gave up on that approach. Actually, I'll show you what I did in a second if you want to have a look. I've not installed it yet, but um, I have uh, pre-prepped that cable with a completely different answer. And if it doesn't work, I have an alternative solution. But I shall show you that in just a moment, dejected. I might as well. It'll take me a second. So, about that cable, where is it? It's right within... There we go found it. Right, so that cable, the solution in the end for the Lynx cable, turned out like this.
So that's what I've come up with. Um, I'm not 100% confident. Yeah, I did. I got I got conductive silver. I'm not 100% confident on this because it's very flaky. And I suspect when I go to install it, there's a very uh, there's a very high probability that the uh, contacts will just strip the conductive paint right off. But the conductive paint did give me a completely like new idea or maybe not new idea but a new approach to the same problem so I might be able to do something with that even if it doesn't work as an actual yeah even if it doesn't work because it's not hardy enough I think um I think I have an alternative idea. The idea being that what I would do is put down some copper strips of the tape, but without the adhesive, and instead of the adhesive, essentially uh, epoxying strips of uh, copper foil to act as the pads, epoxying to give it that extra rigidity, because going in and out of that slot could easily tear it if it's just on its standard adhesive, is my line of thinking. And so what I was kind of thinking of doing to get around that is glue it down and then use the silver paint as a kind of cold solder. That's the idea anyway. Now whether that or what, there's, there's no reason that approach shouldn't work and it should give a somewhat robust uh, joint as well. In theory, anyway, that's that's the theory. I mean, the practice might be very different, but that's the idea. That's the plan. That's the plan of attack. The problem being that the uh, the Lynx cables they use um, they use a carbon conductor, which I also have some on hand at the minute. Yeah, I'm hoping it's successful too, dejected. I really am. Like, I I don't know if it will be. Obviously, I mean, there's no guarantees of anything like that. But I'm fairly confident. I'm fairly confident about it. Oh, that's reasonably neat. So now let's just meter this out. Uh, I'll quickly switch to the cam view. Why not? And then that one is that one. But yeah, hopefully it is successful. I think it will be. Like I say, I think it will be. I mean, I think the cable right now will probably work when I first plug it in, right? And I kind of want to do a test plug-in to see how well that works. And um, he might have done. He might have done. Possibility. The problem with the carbon traces, though, is it's on a part of the uh, circuit that's under constant physical... Well, not constant physical stress, but when you first insert it into the socket, the uh, physical tension from um, inserting it has a fairly high probability of just taking it straight off of the edge. And obviously, if that happens, then it's game over and the repair was for nothing, so... It needs to be a little more, um, 
what's the word, robust, I guess. Right, four. Pin 39 is D2. Alrighty. D2 is one of these cables. D2 is this wire. Alrighty then. And that goes to 39. So now I've got some counting to do. I've got to pick count 19 pins along. Okay. Let's bring you on a journey. Now I'm inviting the count from um, Sesame Street and the Muppets along. So, where's my tweezers? Right. One, two, three. Yeah, um, um, yeah, Vince might have done that. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Okay. Let's use the poor man's wire strippers. Come on, burnt insulation, just come off. Come off. Yeah, that's better. I am going to take a short break in a minute. Only a very short one. that nice scratch on the uh ah there it is. Yep, cool. Before I solder that in I'm just gonna double check by channeling my inner count. So, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and I've lost count. 
39. Wait, did I solder it? Did I push it through the wrong one like a moron? That is possible. Let me double check then. So 20, 21, so 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. Fuck, this is hard. I'm going to zoom out so I can properly see what I'm doing. There we go. Thirty-nine. Okay. And is that correct? Is that thirty-nine? It should be in. Yes, it is. Okay. I can't see it poking through. Oh, no, there it is. So I think that's it. Enough insulation stripped off. Thought it was. Uh, let's strip off more. Strip off more. Oh man, that's tripped out my eyes. Uh, I can't see anything. It's all blurry. It's all a blur. There we go. Sorry, officer. I don't remember. It was all just a blur. I've got to count again. <laughs> 
Oh, now I can see it. There we go. Now we've got enough cable through. Well, enough wire through. Excellent. Excellent. You know all these kits I've seen, like the, um, like the, uh, oh, what's it called? It's like the magic screen. And it has a special connector for this edge thing. I'm just sort of thinking, if they actually just did a push-through pin connector that went straight through the vias, that'd probably be a lot easier. Man, the only problem with this sort of work, when I'm really concentrating, I just go dead silent. <laughs> I'm just like, go on. Uh, a lot dejected, a lot. <laughs> way, way more than I'd like. I'm actually doing the uh, annoying ones right now. Starting off with the irritating wires. Oh god, I've got fibers everywhere now. But on this um on this part of the board I've got like a few wires left. Three or four. Three, four, two, an amount left. There is an amount. I'll give you um I'll give you a zoomed out view in a minute actually, I'll show you how many. Yeah, good enough. Let me show you. Let me show let me show you Cthulhu. It's Cthulhu. It'll eat you. With its sager -y powers of Sega. Or something. Yeah, I'm not good at this pun malarkey. thing I need to do by the way is the boom arm I've got my uh, my camera mounted to I need to modify it a bit but it should uh, when I actually do that you guys should get a much better view of what I'm actually up to as well which will be good all right let's look at that pin okay so that one goes from there I'm just metering things now Two, three, four, five wired in. I think there's six along this edge. So let me just let me check. Yeah, there's one more D3. So D3 is second one on the bottom left. Apparently, which is this lovely wire? Q3 
Can I root that any better than I already have? Yes, I can. Alrighty. So we've got to connect to pin number Wang. What's number Wang? 57. Okay. So we're left off at 39. So 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Did I say 57? Yeah, 50. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57. So right where the tweezers are. Right there. Just nick a bit of that insulation off. The reason I'm taking that solder mask off is so I know which one it is. It's kind of like a, you know, mark this position, right? Yeah, I am actually, yeah. Yeah, totally. At least I think I am. Am I? Let me... Oh, looks like I lost connection for a second there. Can you guys, um, can you guys still hear me? Can you still see what's going on? I assume you can. Yeah, I lost connectivity for a second there. But yeah, I'm using a, uh, I'm using a LAPL mic. I am indeed, Mr. Akshay, I am indeed. Right. Oh, that was really weird, because it told me, like, I'd lost connectivity. Huh. Oh, well. Oh, come on, you... Barstool. This is what I've resorted to. <laughs> okay, let's snip that tiny end bit off. Boom. <laughs> right, there we go, cool. You know what I should do is definitely confirm that is definitely the right the right place for that. So while I'm at it, let's get rid of the excess insulation we don't need. We'll take that off.
sort of lightly slicing into it because I don't want to go slicing into tracks, you know. There we are. Cool. Mod's going okay. Yeah, the mod's going okay. This is the last of the data lines to the LCD. Um, right, so that should be 57. So, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68. Yeah, okay, that's in the right place. Dan Bird. You know, I swear I used to know a Daniel Bird at school many years ago. Sure I did. Huh. You didn't happen to go to a school in, um, in the city of Leicester, did you? Because if you did, it's a real small world. A real small world indeed. Right, there we go. Boom. But yeah, so far, so good. So far, so good. I'm making myself some nice solder pads to solder to. Also, Akshay, how's, uh, how's your evening going, dude? Hope you're having a good one. Doncaster. I don't think I've ever been to Doncaster. Have I been to Doncaster? Maybe I have. I can't remember. I'm sure I have. Or at least in the area. Hey, Frozerinos. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. We're just soldering the very last uh, data line wire, at least. There's plenty more wires to go, but this is the last data wire one. So, let's get this one soldered on. And just like that, it is soldered. Went to get a drink and came back with ice cream. Nice. Nice. That's the way to do it. This is the way to live life, people. Alright, so I think that's um I think that's all the data lines wired up. I'll show you guys that now. So, um Yeah. We've got how many wires there? Six, and I'm pretty sure it's six on the schematic, which it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay, so we've got all those wired up. So we've got a few wires left to go. Um, I think what I want to do next, actually, is solder in the um, brightness control wires. So, let's get... Let's get those soldered in. I can't remember which pads they were. Uh, they were the two unlabeled ones. Yeah, they were unlabeled. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's stick the meter in continuity mode, which tells us if we have a connection or not. And if I flip to the other side. And I meter out P1, which is probably not going to show very well. Th 
third one from the right on the bottom. Third one from the right on the bottom. Which I think was this one. Absolute rat's nest of wires, this. Scunny, as in Scunthorpe. Hey Tristan, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. You can uh, see me faffing about getting this sorted out. So let's just, uh, for argument's sake, confirm. One. Two, three, B one, B two. Okay. So second from the left on the top. Second from the left on the top would be one of these. Would be this one. And that needs to run to this this wheel over here for the brightness control. It's tidy-ish. It's not as good as it could be. I've seen. I've seen tidier. But it's tidy enough. Yeah, I think the key here is I need to keep this wire out of the way of the buttons so it doesn't, you know, interfere with gaming. So if I put. Yeah, if I was to put it about there, so if I snip it, say, there, Yeah, um, Mega Drives, the Mark One Mega Drives did use Rubicons, just like the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System did as well, actually. Yeah, so you didn't skimp on the caps on those systems. I, I'd be, you know, they're, they're probably still running a lot of those caps because those Rubicons were solid. You know, they were good quality caps. So we'll get this into the scope super quick. Yeah, to be fair, Sega consoles weren't all badly built. The Game Gears weren't badly built, they just had a bad choice of capacitor. I don't know who made their capacitors, but those things just rot. They're a ball ache. They're an absolute ball ache. That's sold it okay. Let me double check it though. Yeah. Oh, 
Okay, yeah, I'll be interested to find out uh, find out what happens with that one. I'm curious. Come on. Cut your bugger. You know you're wanting. There we go. Excellent. Right, and there was the other one, which was the third one, that one. That one goes to the second one down. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to root this one a bit weird. I'm going to root it up. And this should hold the other one in place. Yeah, that looks like it should work. And then I'll come back down. And across. I like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, that'll work. All right, Tristan, have a good one. You take care. Oh crap, it's nearly 10 p.m. already, damn. Time's got away from me. I really hope this would only take me an hour. Never mind, never mind. Right, cool. Then I can probably just scrape off that burnt crap with my tweezers. There's loads of different mods for the Game Gear, actually. There's some seriously cool ones out there, too. You've got controller port mods, you've got new LCDs, like this one I'm doing. This isn't a new one. This is an old one. I'm just installing it slightly differently to how most people would. Uh, what else you got? You got... Game Gear TV mod that adds RGB out. This mod also adds VGA out, which is essentially RGB. I think with a small bit of extra circuitry on top of uh, this, you could probably um, you could probably get a Luma signal. I think it's a Luma signal, and then out because VGA does have RGB on it. And then in theory, you could output to a TV that way via SCART as well, so you don't need the extra board. What else? What else? What other mods are there for the Game Gear? Let me see. Well, there's new replacement shells, which this one has got and will be installed into. Okay. Why is it the positioning crap just the way you want is so tricky? Yeah, what other mods are there for the Game Gear? Let me see. Oh, there's a power board. You can get the uh, clean power boards by Retro 6 if you want a USB one. I mean, you could just buy a cable. Gives you the same thing. You, you know, a USB to um, Sega adapter. Let's get a bit of an extra solder on that, I think. I don't like the way that joint looks. No, of course you didn't want to stay. Alrighty. Let's get those Terminator juices flowing. There we go. 
But there we go, we got that soldered too. Uh, yeah, there's a USB charging mod. Um, that one's not out yet though. You can get the clean power USB uh, charge board, which will power the Game Gear by USB 3C, but there's also a battery pack that um, Retro 6 are releasing soon. I think it's on their website actually that can be charged through that as well. As far as I'm aware, anyway. Uh, are there any other wires on this side of the board? Are there? Are there? Yes, there are. There's power. Power and ground. Power and ground. And GGSMS. Okay. Okay. Now, I know you can tap. You can tap power and ground right off of the... Uh, yeah, okay. So this would be ground. Which needs to be wired into... Let me get this on camera. Oh yeah, there are there are ever drives too. There are ever drives too. There's knock-off ever drives as well. Yeah, there's, there's all sorts. There's absolutely all sorts. So I think, I think these two bent over pins are ground connections, right, right here, these two I think are ground, I'm going to meter that just to be sure, um, let's find a ground point, done, okay, we've got a ground point. Yep, they're ground. Cool. Not very far for this wire to go then. What else? I'm trying to think. I'm pretty sure there's other mods. What else you got? Um. So I listed controller mods, I listed new screens, which are the ones most people know about. Um, the GGTV, which adds various video out standards. Uh, what else? The power one. There's a battery one coming. We've got case mods, obviously. Uh, what else? Yeah, the other drive looks decent enough. I think uh, the guy who makes that is called Crix, if I recall correctly. They're a little expensive. Uh, most of the clones are of really old revisions, if I remember, like the X5s or whatever it was. Mind you, I suppose a man's got to get paid for his work, right? Like, when it comes to development of a product like that, it's sort of crazy, right? Ah, come on. There we go. I'm getting somewhere with this now. There we go, cool. Bit of flux. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really know much about Crix as a person. But what I do know is for him to develop what he developed, he's got to be pretty talented at what he does.
extra soul than that. soldering right there. The technology that really interests me at the minute are the uh, optical drive emulators for consoles like the PS1 and Sega Saturn and uh, Dreamcast and so on. That's the stuff I think is really cool. Shanker. Great, so I think that's our ground. At least it better be, or I've just created a short. <laughs> and then we've got VCC, it would be the next one for us. VCC is pin 35 on the cart slot. Which is how many across? Six, if I recall. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. That a one. Okay, okay. Tell you what, we're really close to uh, being able to test this, test this out soon. You know, I've only got a few more wires to go, I think. Yeah, the. Um the sort of EverDrive style cart thing is really, really awesome. They really are. I mean, I've, I've said it before to people, and I'll say it again, because obviously, you know, you guys don't know what I always say, because I don't always say it on stream, but like, I like to say there is something special about owning real copies of games, right? Like, just having a real copy on a shelf or, you know, on a, on a stand or whatever, right? It's just nice. There's something special about that, in my opinion. Now, not to say that you shouldn't get these flash cards, because the flash cards are great, you know. If you, if you just want to play the games, they're fantastic, right? Like, you, you can't do better. You really can't. But I'd still say there's something special about having real copies. And I don't have too many real copies of games. I have a few. Well, not many. I mean, even these days, most of the games I own are digital. You know, I buy them on Steam, I buy them on the PSN. How much does this mod cost, roughly? Um, top of my head, £46 off of AliExpress, something like that. So it's still the cheapest, even with the new ones coming out. But the new ones coming out are going to be more convenient. One, two, three, four, five, six. That I want. Right there. When you ask me how much it costs, are you asking me installation cost, or are you asking me cost of the device? Because I gave you the cost of the device. Thank you. 
a stable connection. Yeah, nothing wrong with not box. I mean, I like having the boxes too, but like, I have a lot of unboxed games too. A lot of them just came with broken consoles I bought, actually. Alright, so one of these is the GG SMS Select, which I will be testing. I will be testing that. And one of them is probably the clock. Oh, I said it's about forty-five pounds or so. Around about forty-five pounds UK. Um, it's an amount of US dollars. If you give me a second, I'm actually looking at the listing right now. Uh, I'll tell you. Hold up. Forty-one pounds and seventy-two pence is the price. Let me show you. Let me show you. This is what I'm looking at. And yeah, forty-one seventy-two. But yeah, I've got to wire up the GG SMS line because if I don't, then you know, can't play Sega Master System games. And the Game Gear is a Sega Master System underneath, really. It's, you know, Z80. So GG SMS is the third one on the right, which is that one. And which pen is that? Yeah, the GGSMS line, it basically switches the Game Gear into its Master System mode, which allows it to boot actual Master System games. Because <coughs> the Game Gear can do that, which is... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Pretty cool. Is what it is, if I'm not coughing. SMS is this one on the left here, that one. So we get the snips again. Yeah, I think what happens is when you plug in one of the Master System converter carts into the Game Gear cart slot, it connects this pin that I'm about to wire up now, I think. And I think when that happens, the Game Gear knows that it's in Master System mode, and it changes its output, because the resolution is slightly different, and obviously the, uh, the McWill clone needs to know about that as well. I'm not sure exactly how it does that. Not sure of all the details, RWL. To be honest, I'm not fully versed on uh, the hardware. I mean, I know I know a good bit, but like, yeah, I'm no expert. Do it. I mean, maybe when you connect it, it holds a certain line high or something like that, and then that switches the Z80 into a particular instruction mode or something like that. I mean, I don't know. I really don't know how it works. I should probably look it up. Oh, yeah, I wanted to add more. 
more solar actually. <laughs> I don't think so, RWL, because the original Game Gear, I'm pretty sure it didn't dis uh, not the Game Gear, the original Master System, sorry, I'm pretty sure it didn't output in 480p, and the screens are 480p screens, you know, they're kind of off-the-shelf LCDs, right, like, they're, they're not anything special, and I guess it just so happened that 480 screens were fairly common. No, don't, 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 don't stress about it. Don't stress about it. You know, you, you want to type, you, you type. I'll answer as best I can. I don't mind. You know, that's part of the fun of streaming. Ah, solder you get. Ah, yeah, there we go. Nice. Now, I think think that this last wire is the clock. Four pins along. Four pins along. On the right. There's another couple of things on the main board I've got to bridge together, and that'll be it, I think. We're nearly done. Let's, let's do, 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 do. Hey, I don't wonder if you play games. You do what you like, man. You know, if you're in, if you're more interested in the hardware, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I once wrote an emulator for um, Chip Eight. You know, and it's not like I play Chip Eight games. <laughs> you know. I'm not doing too bad actually, RB King. To be fair, like I you know, I'm nearly there. I've just forgotten which. Um, I've misplaced a diagram I was looking at. Where is it? Is that it? No. Oh wait, I wasn't looking at a diagram. I was looking at the picture of the board. I'm being, I'm being a dum dum, being dum dum. Right there we go. Clock for ah, it is the clock. Okay. Yeah, that's all it is. It's literally that that jumper is um it's what I just soldered. That SMS jumper is that one. That's all it is. Just that connector. You know, dead simple. I know Luke at Retro Six, he's uh, well I don't know him personally, but I know he goes to uh, a lot of effort to design the products he does. People often give the guy stick, but I guess you can't make everybody happy, right? But, like, I've been impressed with what he's pulled off. Um, right, so we've definitely got the clock. I'm now looking for where on the board to solder it to. Point FB1. Okay. Okay. On the other side of the board. Right, cool. That makes sense. If I run that through this now vacated hole. So if you take a look, just for some cable management, I can run that through this vacated hole right here. Keep things nice and neat. Or neat-ish, anyway. No, I can't, because that's the wrong side of the board. I'm being an idiot. 
Yeah, how is the uh, how is the modded unit from Retro Six? Because they call them, oh, I can't remember what they call them now. They're like, I don't know. They got some sort of premium branding slogan stuff, if I recall. Which, to be fair, you know, you, you can tell these mods. They take time. Uh, which one's get? Damn it. Top or bottom pad? Which is going to give the cleanest signal for that? That is the question. Look, I didn't tell you Tropico 5 was harder than Dark Souls, because then you'd have never tried it and known the true pleasure that is, like, being El Presidente. And you would have never met Penultimo. And Penultimo is literally the penultimate helper. Yeah, I'll do right there. Interesting. So there are game gear releases that were SMS games, not native ones, not just adapters for SMS carts on GG. Oh, fair enough. Only sixty dollars more, really. <laughs> Akshay, my man, my man, you gotta, um, you gotta work out how to be better at being a dictator. That's the problem. You've got to rule your tropicans with an iron fist. You gotta teach him who's boss. Have any of you guys on the stream uh, ever played the Tropico series? Because if you haven't, would recommend that series. It's really great. It's absolutely fantastic, actually. Tropico 5's pretty good. 6 is good, too. 5 gets a lot of hate, but I think it's good. Oh, that's the one, RB King. Prestige Editions. Yeah, that's the one. That's totally the one. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Aren't they, like, £300 or something? They're not cheap. Were they really? That's interesting. So they basically... What? Shrunk down the circuitry of a master system cart and stuffed it in a game gear? I assume that's what they did. But the ROM itself was the same, I guess. With a slightly different pinout. If so, that's pretty interesting. And I did not know that. Therefore, today I learned. Yeah, that is interesting. Ow. All right, so in theory, I'm not sure how well you guys can see this. I've got, let's see, you can probably just about see it. Okay, so I've got a, I've got the clock. I've got the clock pinned there. I'll tell you what, RB King, if you ever open it up, let me know. Let me know. Because I do play Tropico 6, and it is a good game. Let's see if that's now wired up. Yeah, we got continuity where I wanted it. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. So there's a few other wires I've got to wire up now. There is a test point down here that needs to be wired, I think, to the bottom of R23, if I remember rightly. Ah, right, okay. 
Okay. I assumed it was specifically for Sega Master System games. Well, exclusively, right? Like, I didn't realise that. That is interesting to know, though. That's cool. So, T10 to the bottom of R23. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Alright, so that's just a jumper wire. I can do that. Alright. How do I best want to do that? It's just a straight... It's just a straight run from one to the other. Like that. Alright. This I can do. Right. Let's get this jumper in. Great, and before you say it, I know that is not great. I'm assuming I can actually get in it at the right angle with these snip snips. There we go. And that is now okay. Yeah, Castle of Illusion. Uh, Castle of Illusion is actually a pretty good um, Game Gear game. Or Master System game, I guess, depending on how you're looking at it. <laughs> yeah. It was actually pretty cool. Pretty popular too, back in the day, I think. It was one of the more popular ones. So we got that jumper in. Alrighty. Cuts or having none of that. Alrighty, um, then we got a bridge two points up here, I think. We got a bridge. Or is it different on this one? Oh, please don't tell me it's T12. I bet it's T12. Let's check. What points do you want me to bridge? Yeah, I got uh, a copy with a faulty one as well, I'll be. <laughs> actually, I think I got a couple of... No, actually, I might have given one away. I might have given one, one away. Oh, wait, do I need the C-Sync line? Or don't I? 
nuts, I don't remember. So you bridge that, you connect that. I've replaced all those components off stream anyways. Um, T10 to T11. Is that right? No, that's for the twin A sec, isn't it? Sorry, bear with me, guys. I'm just looking at the uh, docs. By the way, cannot recommend Console 5 enough. There's such a brilliant website. You know, if you want any references or anything like that, they're great. Dokey and page two. Do I need C sync? I think C sync's optional if I remember. I'm pretty sure it's for VGA. But I'm double checking that. Sorry, I'm kind of uh, faffing here, aren't I? Might as well show you what I'm looking at. So, yeah, it's this. So, we've just done our 23 to T10. Uh, C sync to T2, I'm pretty sure, is optional. Um, I'm just looking for it on here. Where the heck is seasick? Yeah, I've already done all that. That's all good. Wonder if C6 clock sync. I don't know. Yeah, you can get cap kits from Console 5, Brian. Yeah, you can. You can get them from Retro 6 as well. Uh, I think Console 5 might be US-based, so it depends where you're based, which one you want to use. Personally, I just order caps sort of as and when needed, right? But, like, you know, it's entirely up to you. I swear, C-Sync was optional. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we already got 5 volts. Check that before stream. Uh, blah, 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 first VCC ground, yeah, done that, done that, done that, one wire from T10 to lower pad of L23, done that, we've done the clock, done that, done that. I swear this is different. I swear these instructions are different. Connect to VCC, 5 volt, oh right, yeah, okay, I've done that, 2 and 3, right, 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 okay, okay, alright, alrighty, righty, 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 okay. Let's do these button ones then, shall we? Let's do these button ones, so, we've got to do... C 
37 is button one left side. So let's let's check that out. C37. Left side, which is down here. That one. So we'll just get some fresh solder into that. from around the side. Oh, sorry about that focus. That's okay. That's for button one. We're getting there. We are getting there. Absolutely time for poor man's wire strippers again. Again, if you've actually got a half decent pair of wire snips, you, sh you shouldn't do what I'm doing here. This is not the best way to strip a wire. Because little plastic bits left behind can get in the way of the conductivity and everything else. That's why I kind of then get a pair of tweezers and kind of just remove the debris off of the actual wire contact itself off the metal. Like you see me doing now and that just sort of combs off the plastic that's on there. There we go. It's relatively okay and then I'm just going to come in with the flush cuts and I'm going to trim off um, some of the burnt casing like that and like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not going to be precious about it, it's only, it's only insulator. And then what I'm going to do is just heat up the solder and then slide the cable into it. It just makes it a bit easier. Just like that. Done. And then we've got button 2 which goes to the right side of C38. Which actually should be nearby. There we go. There it is. Bit of 
solder. Yeah, actually, this Game Gear, when I was recapping it, it was one of the better ones I've done. It like, although the caps had leaked, they were quite easy to clean up the mess. And honestly, cl cleaning up the mess on these things, that's probably the hardest part about a recap job. There we go. Bring that across to the button two point on the board, right there. Shanker. Oh, um, actually, Brian, just thinking about it, if you need um, Lynx cap sets, and actually maybe Turbo Express as well, if you're in the UK, there's an eBay seller called Digital Delights, I believe. You might want to check him out. He's... Uh, He's really responsive on eBay. He's a really good seller, actually. And if you just want a kit ready to go and you don't want to faff around, yeah, he's really good. I think his name's Mark. The actual chap's name. I haven't really spoken to him much, but he was very communicative. Much more so than uh, the vast majority of eBay sellers, so I would recommend him. C36 for button 3, which is where? Where the heck is that? C36. Yeah, there it is. Right there. Chilling. It's just chilling, waiting to be... Waiting to get hot for us. This cat wants to get hot for us, you understand. And so we made it get hot. <laughs> oh yeah, then definitely. Brian, yeah, definitely go console 5. They're, you know, they're reputable, right? They're, yeah. The guy who runs console 5, I think... And anyone here can correct me on this. I think his name's Luke. 
and I'm pretty sure the guy's gone to a lot of pains to document a lot of retro systems. And yeah, I haven't bought any of the kits from um, Console 5 myself, but from what I hear, reputable capacitors are used, you know, so people have only spoken highly about console 5 and I use console 5 as a reference for uh, a lot of the work I do like yeah you can't go wrong with them as far as I know so yeah they probably are the best option for you right, where is my scalpel? there's my scalpel It's gone. Turbo Express. Was the Turbo Express one of those NEC systems? It was, right? Sure it was. I never I know about a lot of these systems and I hardly like touched any of them, you know. But I only know about most of them in passing. that oh right okay yeah yeah I mean like I say um, I'm not bad mouthing digital delights he was brilliant that's what I'm saying but yeah the vast majority of eBay sellers like you know they just don't reply no response. You just get a blank. It's like, oh, thanks. Okay. <laughs> right, C Sync. Uh, well, you know, I could wire that up. Now, I'm not sure if I need to wire C Sync. I don't think that I do. Don't think that I do. Right. Well, let's um, let's find out.
Sorry about that, chaps. Sorry about that. That was acting up. Yeah, it's been a bit finicky tonight. Yeah, thanks for pointing it out. So anyway, I was going to say, I think we're pretty much done on the wiring front. I've just checked the polarities. We're good. So we're looking good on that front. I've not, you know, wired grounds VCC and VCC to ground or anything silly like that. So that's fine. Um, so we'll do a we'll do a test run now. So where is the LCD? There it is. Actually, we'll just put this into the scope super quick. It makes plugging it in easier. You can do this by hand, to be fair, without a scope. Just like to be sure. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. All right, that should be good. Back to the camera view. No guarantees this is going to work straight away because. I've wired it differently to how I normally would, and I'm not. Yeah, it's not a big deal if it doesn't. Well, let's find out. Do need a game though. Now well, somebody mentioned Mickey Mouse. Let's get Mickey Mouse. Let's get Mickey Mouse. Right, what we got? Mickey Mouse. We got some Mickey Mouse madness. see if we get anything at all. Hopefully we do. Yes we do. Look at that. Perfect. Oh, that looks great. This control's working, look. Looks good, right? Sounds good as well. Let's get the microphone up close. This, this does sound quite nice for a Game Gear, to be fair. There's no distortion on the audio. Except there's no audio playing right now. Come on. There we go. Now we do have a some we do have something a little special on this game gear as well. This was a special request, which I'm happy to show. Uh, let me just unplug this and unplug this. And what I can do is I can show you the installation of this LCD into its final resting place. 
Yeah, and it, it, it does sound better with the uh, case acting as an enclosure, actually. It really does. Surprisingly, it sounds a lot better when it's like that, but eh, it is what it is. Anyway, so we'll just pop that aside. And let me just get a cloth to put down, because I don't want to scratch the case. Um, I have a cloth somewhere. job. Doesn't have to be perfect. So let me zoom out. So what we have here is one of these fancy, fancy doohickeys. So this is the Retro 6 case. Um, I do need to clean the glass fascia on it. Let me show you what that looks like. Gone with a black one. This is RB Kings. He's got this black fascia on it. Looks pretty good, in my opinion. It's actually quite a nice looking shell. At least I think so, anyway. So, yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop all these buttons out of the way for a second. Because I do need to... Because whenever you do these installs, you you, you have to you have to dust as bloody covers. The covers are a nightmare. It's really, really easy to get dust in on them. But that is what it is. But let's start installing things. Now, you have to be careful... And actually, um, what I do need to do is make a modification to this, because if you look, we've got this middle post here, and we've got a little sticky bit there. Now, if you look at where that post is, that will jam right into the ribbon cable of that new LCD, and it will wreck it if you just plug it in. And I don't know if any of you guys follow my mate Vince, but he did, there was a video where he did that. I think it was his first um, Game Gear screen install, so this sadly needs to come off. So I'm going to take that off. And that will now be able to go together without it jamming the um, without it jamming into the LCD cable. You see how the uh, post doesn't come all the way in now? What we need to do is fill that in with something just to, you know, block it out. I think the Japanese ones probably did come in different colours. I think, um, well, actually the Western ones did too, to be fair. They did. I do like that this is pre-cut as well. That makes things a lot nicer. So, you can see we've got the... Uh, uh, it'd help if I put it on the right way. We've got the power board that goes there. And then we've got the audio board that goes there. And the speaker. Yeah, there was a Coca-Cola red one. Totally. Okay, that is in the right position. Now you can see as well, it comes with this little standoff thing, which is nice for the speaker, which goes a way round. Which way round? I don't know. Probably that way. Is it that way? Nope. That way? No. Some say I'm confused by speakers. Oh, I see. So on the original Game Gears, these were glued in. Well, that's interesting. 
Huh. So I guess it screws in. I guess it screws in like that. Kind of hard to show, but yeah. Like that. The original ones were kind of epoxied in on the original Game Gears. Uh, okay, here's a screw collection that came with it. Shoot. I am sure at least some of these screws will fit that. Um, probably two of the little ones. Two of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. Yeah, my mate Vince is a legend. That guy's like... He's just... <laughs> yeah, he's good. He's good. He's not afraid of trying anything, Vince. He just goes for it. That can't be right. That can't be right. How the bollocks does this work then? Does it screw in? Where are the bloody screws? Ah, <sighs> whatever. Right. They include screws with the case. The case comes with no instructions and doesn't tell you which screws are supposed to go where. Classic. That looks right. Feels right. Yeah, he's done some funny little videos like that. Yeah, Vince buys the randomish stuff off eBay just to fix as well, doesn't he? Like random like toy racing sets and things like that. <laughs> I think he just enjoys... I think he enjoys the challenge. And... whoops. And why not, right? Why not? Oh, balls, you know what I forgot to install? The, um, the power slider thingy. Where is that? That goes over the battery bay. I know it's on here. Is. That's what we're after. Oh, it's always a nice feeling fixing something. It's addictive. It's genuinely somewhat addictive when you repair something. It's like, oh yeah, I did that. <laughs> 
particularly when you've spent a long time trying to fix something and it's just frustrating you and you're making mistakes and you know it's just how life goes I wish where the nuts did I put that screwdriver oh it's right there it's literally right in front of me right in front of me okay up we come Bish bash bosh. Okay, there we go. That is the grey power slider installed. Nice thing about the um, Retro 6 case here, as well, I've noticed, is that because on the original Game Gear, which I'll show you in a second it's a bit different and it's a bit awkward <laughs> addicted to watching repair live streams <laughs> don't forget switch cover yeah do you mean that yeah we're there I've not forgot um yeah, on an original one, these bloody things, you have to trim them off. You have to, like, snip these all along. And it's so annoying. It's so ungodly annoying. Anywho, anywho, I digress. So, we've then got the battery cover. With some conveniently applied self-adhesive already on there. That's a nice touch, actually. Good job, Retro Six. That on firm, yeah. And what that does, it means when you've got the uh, console flip like this and as you can see I've already pre-applied the original uh, serial number sticker on there you now see we've got that nice little cover in there yeah well it's kind of what got me into uh, repairs watching other people you know I watched um, I started out watching a really nice fella called um, Brancus Creations, Bruce Rain, and he's, he's really good. Like I, I would credit him with a lot of the techniques I've learned, particularly around actually soldering and wielding a soldering iron, just sort of watching him, because he, he's really good at explaining what he's doing, why he's doing it, and different techniques, and he's got some great tutorial videos, which I would definitely recommend people watch, like, hands down. He, he does some good stuff, and... Um, I know a lot of you have come from Phil Decoder, and yeah, he does some excellent stuff as well. Um, and he's been doing some pretty good tutorial content recently too. But yeah, you guys should definitely try your hand at stuff. Ah, uh, do people leave them out? No, I don't. I don't think usually. I don't think they usually do. You, you, there's actually, you can actually have a lot of problems like leaving them out. It's not a good idea to leave them out. So no, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Anyway, I don't think so. Right. So we've got, we've got that. That is now on its way to being a Game Gear. Oh yeah, Rossman's brilliant. Lewis Rossman, he's brilliant. I'm a little sad he's moved away from board repair videos, but like, I understand why he's done it, and he's explain he's, he's done a good job of explaining it too, actually. Credit to him. You know. Oh, Rossman. He's a, he's a good un. He's a good un. All right, now this one I'm perplexed by. Am I supposed to put self-tapping screws into this? I 
I mean, it comes with self-tappers, but they seem a bit long for this application. Zoom in. Zoom, 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 zoom. So, it comes with this cover, which is similar to the original one. The original one's just epoxied down. This one looks like they've taken it a step further and they've given it some screw holes and screw posts, see? To hold it down, which, yeah, fine. Um, but it's not very thick plastic, and I'm thinking, like, do I run the risk of going clean through the bloody Game Gear if I put those self-tappers in? I'm worried about that, because the last thing I want to do is... You know, go poke in a screw for a brand new <laughs> shell, right? I don't... Alright, let's do a test fit. Let's do a delicate test fit. Uh, screw it like that. I could snip these down. Hang on, let's see if I can get it into focus. I could snip them down. Yeah, you can see how long that is there. I guess what I should do, first of all, quick test. Do they fit through this? No, is the answer. But they are self tapping screws, which is a weird decision. Why are they self tappers? Mr. Solderfix. I'll check him out. I mean, I already watched Vince and Coda, Phil, so... Yeah, I'll, ch I'll check the other guy out. Oh, this isn't going to go through. This should be fine. Literally double checking to be sure though. Nope, still perfectly fine. Still perfectly fine. Can you tell I'm being paranoid about it? And that's nice and firm in. I ain't going anywhere. Nice. <laughs> Subscribe to any channel with solder in it. So what if the channel's called Solder Penis 9000? You're gonna just immediately sub to it. <laughs> Sub, sub, sub right now. Right, um, I do want to clean this screen on this side. Um, okay. All right. I will use that.
probably at least long enough to see if it has anything to do with soldering. I don't know, man, that could be a trap. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. I see what you did there. Right, so one thing I didn't mention. Where's those flash cuts again? Um, you see this post? Now, I did mention you've got to snip it. What you do need to do is get it really flush with the plastic. In fact, actually, no, we've got these standoffs here, haven't we? Yeah, we've got some standoffs. Okay. But it's still a good idea to get that as flush as you can. Uh, there's a piece of plastic somewhere on the other side of my apartment now, but that's fine. I'm sure whenever the uh, letting agents come round to see what I've been doing to the place and they find that it looks like Shen's in a tiny piece of plastic is the last of their worries. <laughs> Now the annoying thing about this, it is an absolute arse to get all of the tiny little smears that appear on these off the bloody screen. So I've got to rub at this and just hope that the tiny little smears come off. It's such a, it's such a git. I really should have waited till last for this. Or nearly last, obviously. It can't be completely last. Absolutely hate cleaning these things. Truly, I do. Anti-static spray. I need something. I need something. I mean, it's hard to convey what I can see that you guys can't. You know what I mean? It's uh, really hard to explain. Like, the smears, like, you just... Oh, you can probably see it a little bit in the light there. Do you see those smears? Yeah, you can just about see it.
YouTube is asking you to abide by their community guidelines. Abide. Well, uh, don't you know, old chap, when you're on YouTube, you must not make any kind of fuss, and you must obey the rules of being, and if you don't obey the rules, well, uh, well, the good old people at YouTube, they're going to come over to you, and they're going to be like, oh, look, look, chap, if you do not behave, we're going to have to write you a sternly written letter. And you don't want that, do you? You don't want that. Because, honestly, that's kind of that's the worst kind of punishment they can give you. And you really don't want somebody from YouTube showing up on your doorstep talking like that, you know. I hate Queen in these mother effers. You know what I do have? It might work. I might have to reapply the adhesive. What I do have are those. Oh. I mean, maybe, maybe they'll work. Let's try it on the other side. It's easier to clean the other side. to that for now. Uh, oh, so annoying. What's annoying is that one's probably no better, actually. I don't think I have any more. I'm positive I don't. I'm just checking to see if I've got any more spare fascias, but I'm pretty sure I don't. That's wires. That's a game gear, that's a game gear, that's another game gear, that's a game gear, and that's a game gear, that's a game gear, that's a game gear. Okay, new. What we got here? Okay, definitely not going to be in there. I'm going to close that drawer of evil crock and horrors. Maybe in here? Nope, that's just practice solder boards from ages ago. Okay. <sighs> fine. 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 Yeah, it is a nice colour, isn't it? This is uh, RB King's choice, you know, so... If you want to compliment anyone on the taste of this, it's not me, it's RB King. So what I need to do is very carefully, very bloody carefully, remove this. You know, it's quite a good fit, that, as well. Nah, I don't have turps. I have the best thing for cleaning this, to be honest. I'm going to have to apply new adhesive to it when I'm done. But the best thing is, very washing up liquid. Seriously. But I need to get underneath the glass, right? Okay, that's coming. I need a spudger so that I don't damage anything. Ah, excellent. Ah, terps. The 
preferred drink of my dad's generation. Right, you'll have to have to ask our beaking on that one. Okay, well, we've... Yeah, right, alright, we've got that off at least. Um, probably going to have to put fresh adhesive on this soon, trademark. What I'm going to do is the age-old tradition of handling glass the proper way instead of like an idiot. And I'm going to use the gloves. You know, it's funny, isn't it? You look at my work area, it looks very similar to Phil Dakota's. <laughs> right, you know this has got serious because I've got my gimp gloves on, you know. <laughs> right guys, I'm going to be right back and I'm going to give this a wash. I won't be long. I'm going to put the intermission on.
Beseech the creator and changer of the way. Oh, sorry, I was just chatting away there to um, 
the chaos god zinch changer of ways to help clean this uh clean this fascia here oh oh now, apparently the chaos gods aren't uh aren't all that favorable with me today ah oh. yeah Turns out I'm out of compressed air as well, so that sucks. Um, would have made drying this a lot easier. So I'm just going to kind of leave this on this angle and just allow that to dry. And maybe... Uh, there might be a little bit left in it. No. No, that needs to go into rubbish. Okay. Uh... No, I don't want to spray that on it. That's that's to be a D40. Uh, no, pretty sure I'm all out of compressed air. Well, that sucks. Yep, that sucks. What else have I got around that I could use? I guess I could. Um, I guess I could spray it down in uh, brake cleaner. So yeah, um, I guess it's the waiting game, right? Yeah, it is what it is. I do like this shell. It's quite a nice shell. I probably wouldn't pick this colour for myself, but it does look good. It's quite a nice finish on it. It is, it is decent quality, this thing. But you know what I can do is I can um, I can prep this shell. Uh, where is the tesser tape? I've got a big roll of it somewhere, and it is not right in front of me where I'd expect it to be because you know that would be too easy. Uh, well, I could use this one. Uh, PU D lid kit. That's not what I want. Um, oh. nope. Crap, I'm not having a good day. I have no idea where my tesser tape is. Double sided tape. I mean, I've got some, but. It ain't tesser. And I'll bet you any money it's right in front of me. Bet you. Okay, that's masking tape. That's capped on tape. That's paintbrushes. Well, shit. You want a Saturn Master System Mega Drive and Dreamcast? Good choices. Good choices. Particularly the Sega Saturn. That system is underrated. Very underrated. Good system. Great system, actually. I love that thing when I was a kid. Oh, wait, there's a test of tape on here. <laughs> Found a Mega Drive. <laughs> And a SNES. And Sonic. Not what I'm after. You dry yet. Oh, they're still smearing. I can't... 
You see the smear? Wait, let's see if we can. Yeah, you see the smearing on the sides. I can't get that off. Yeah, Saturn really does need more love. Oh wait, that's coming now. Just needs a uh, just needs a bit of extra loving. This is stupid. God damn it. Well, you know what? It's not as if I actually have to fit this right now. I can do that later. It's not a big deal. And it's no point holding everything else up for it. Because it goes over the top anyway. So I'll carry on. And I'll just leave the dust cover on the LCD. Let's see if we can remove that dust cover if it's installed though. So that would go... Which way around? That way around. No. Okay. Okay. All right. Fine. <laughs> Still actually pretty sticky. You know what? What I need to do with this, I need to soak this in isopropyl alcohol to get off the original adhesive that's on there so that I can actually clean it properly because it's hard to get this um, underside properly clean. If I can get that off, which I can, I can apply fresh stuff with this and uh, get this clean. But at the minute it's getting water spotting and stuff as well, which isn't great. But if I can actually run a cloth over there without ripping off the lint and stuff with this adhesive... I can um, I can get it properly clean. Well, I, I could do RB King. I could do. But, you know, annoyingly, I do have one other one, but it's got a defect, so it's completely useless. You know, this is my only other spare, and it's just... Well, you can see what's wrong with it. If you look at the... Uh, you see that bubble in it? Manufacturing defect right there. It's a shame. But these things happen. These things happen. But yeah, I mean, you know, we've, we've got the system modded. What I will test, actually, because I didn't test it yet, is um, whether or not it functions properly with... Um, I'm not going to short anything. Actually, that might short something. I'm going to see if it'll um, run Master System games. So I'm just going to put that there to stop this screen shorting anything. Like a so. Let's flip that over. Let's see how well it runs a Master System game. Which helps if I connect up the boards as well. Which are now in the shell. That's fine. nice thing about fresh lenses is like unlike that one that I installed like an idiot <laughs> um, they just peel and go you know they're clean um, okay that's the sound but I've not got the speaker plugged in but that's fine um, so we just want the game
That's a really tidy shell, actually. I like the look of it. Have you got anything? Oh yeah, look, there you go. It's running Master System games. Looks pretty good, that. Let's press start. I'm pressing start, aren't I? I bet you don't want start. I bet you want like one or two, don't you? Fine. New. Yeah. By the way, this this is totally how you normally play Master System games right here. This is the uh, official approved way. Check it out, we're in. I can jump. Nick Loin, yeah, yeah. Nick Loin was uh, it was it was a classic, man. It was an absolute gem, Nick Loin. Funny story. When I was a uh, when I was a wee young lad in school. Back in primary school, The Lion King had not long come out when I was in, I can't remember what year I was in, but I was in primary school. And anyway, they asked us, you know, you know, like it is in primary school, they ask you to uh, draw some pictures of some cutesy thing or whatever. And like, I picked The Lion King. And so I drew, I drew a picture of Simba, which actually wasn't that bad. You know, it was a reasonable picture of Simba. But because I was still a young kid, I couldn't really spell, so I wrote the Loin King. And that was on the wall for ages. And it always makes me think as an adult, like, those teachers must have had a laugh out of that. The Loin King. Now, if you guys want to know how, how, like, what this screen looks like, and um, how well it runs and all the rest of it. There is a guy on YouTube called Lofarius. And uh, he does little game videos. And I'll put his name on here now. Um, Lofarius. I think it's spelt this way. Maybe. Anywho. Um... Yeah, Lofarius is a chat I sold one modded Game Gears to, because I, I was selling them for a time, modded on eBay. Um, and maybe I will do again, because I've got plenty to shift. I just don't have any mod screens at the minute. That That's my last one. But uh, when I do, they'll be back on eBay. But Lofarius, what he does, he, pl he plays loads of random Game Gear games. There's tons on his channel. And he just sort of makes a video out of it. And, um, you know, it will talk about random Game Gear games, basically. But if you want to see, like, how this sort of screen and, you know, the systems that I've worked on look when they're running, just check out his channel. I'll tell you what, though, he tests some really crap games. Like Super Tank Battle, that one's terrible. But yeah, anyway guys, um, I'm going to call it quits now. You know, th this is pretty much good. We just need to clean off that LCD fascia and um, roll with it, you know. Which I will. I'll probably do it on my lunch break at work tomorrow. But yeah, I, I don't know how well this shows, but... You can probably see there's water spots. I don't want to leave anything like that on there. I want this crystal clear, so... And I'm pretty sure RB King also wants it crystal clear.
being that he's a man of uh, high caliber and taste. <laughs> But yeah. So now I can get my hands out of the GIMP gloves and I can stop sodomizing this game gear. Um, I think we'll call it quits for the evening. And I have to say, it's been a pleasure to have you all. And drinks, uh, it's been pretty lengthy. It's been a lengthy mod. Um, thanks for watching. And um, yeah. As always, bye for now and take care. Oh, hold on before I go. Let me let me let me find a chap I was talking about. I'm sub to it, but I probably just spelled it wrong. One second. I just saw his name. Where is it? I am having a moment of dyslexia and I'm not even dyslexic. I have forgotten how to spell. Oh, Lef Lefarious. Okay. Sorry, my bad. I'll just link. I will link. You want to see his Game Gear games running on a Game Gear that I, I sorted. There you go. That's that's the channel to look at. And uh, it is possible with these systems to uh, mod in VGA output and capture it on a proper capture card rather than having to film it. But there you go anyway, different needs, different price points and so on and yada 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 yada. Anyway, like I say, it's been a pleasure having you all and have a great have a great evening all. Great day, great afternoon, great summoning of the uh, demons of the war, whatever, you know, whatever you're celebrating. Happy uh, St. Patrick's Day or uh, Get Drunk Day or whatever you want to call that. But anyway, pleasure having you all.